Why do I have a blowtorch, you ask? Because today, we're gonna be reviewing and talking about Firestarter by Stephen King. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thanks for joining us and please subscribe. Down below, hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post and comment below. There is lots of fun to be had and talked about here at Dev K Thrills with me, your host, Dev K. Today we're gonna to be talking about Stephen King's Firestarter, an exhilarating book. I loved it from first page to last. It's Firestarter tells the story of little girl Charlie who has extraordinary fire starting capabilities. Charlie gets her powers from her parents. Uh, her mother and her father both needed $200 and literally participated in a government funded experiment, be experimented upon and to figure out if they had from these drugs acquired any kind of powers. Charlie's father has the power to push away uh, certain thoughts and to create other alternative uh, 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 motives for people. He has made lots of money on the fact that he's able to help people get through their fears and conquer uh, uh, weight loss and stuff like that. And he's managed to create uh, income for him and his daughter while on the run from the organization known as the shop they've given powers they think to these college students in the hopes that someone would develop powers um, and be able to be used for their own gain Andy Charlie's father is on the run from these people for years uh, thinking that he dodged them and, and being naive and to think that it was okay to live about their daily lives without having any interference from the shop. But little does he know that they've been watching him. He is being pursued. They are looking for any known denominators or factors that could help them with their program success. And one of those factors is literally Charlie McGee. Little Charlene McGee, AKA Charlie, is just a little girl who in the shops, uh, um, uh, analogy of it has been trained to be scared of her powers but the shop wants her to use her powers um, there's a point in the book where they describe and talk about the theory the theory of how for example toilet training they use in the book how we train children to be toilet trained and to be um, to think of their wrongdoings as bad poop in the toilet poop in the toilet there's a scene where literally or not a scene there well I guess there is a scene there's a movie out there's a part in the book where Charlie has uh, been just kind of analyzed by the uh, people who've been watching her and they assume that since she's been toilet trained and she's this little girl this extraordinary power that maybe they her parents have taught her from a young age to now She's only like nine. They've taught her to hone in on her powers, to suppress the feeling of anger because emotions tied to your powers, your powers are tied to your emotions, stuff like that. So Charlie, in a sense, doesn't like using her powers. She doesn't want to see anyone getting hurt. What she wants to see is um, her mother and her father not be in pain. She, throughout the years of her existence, and she's young, Stephen King really does a good job of showing little kids throughout the story you kind of get a progression that it's been maybe like five years but in all reality the book spans over maybe a two-year lapse uh, with the second storyline being from before Charlie was born and the first storyline being Charlie gets uh, uh, taken the whole process is literally the span of a year that they spend together you see the story progression of characters who didn't mean Charlie any good, being Rainbird um, and the uh, head of the uh, shop, the guy, I forgot his name, can't think of his name. They are aging and they have been tired. They have been doing this for years and so they just really want their hard work to pay off and it really kind of, in my opinion, it really does set a tone at the end that they're going to get her regardless of her father being in the way or any 
um, pre-notions of this child knowing who she is or what she is or how she can hone in her powers. Like, there is a time frame where Charlie and these goons essentially have a back and forth thing where she's negotiating I want to get a horse I want to ride that horse then you're gonna let me see my father is what Charlie is saying in her uh, narrative of the story I love Stephen King's portrayal of stories that have an ominous overlay of every character we get feelings from each character in these books and I love that um, this book really reminded me of the Institute and also like that in the Institute I really did hate that you see a good character go in a sense you don't like seeing good characters go I hate seeing good characters go but um, it's it's kind of necessary to the plot's progression honestly to see a character of that has been built up for you to hear and know that person um, for me yeah, that's every Stephen King book that I read. Just loss. Just like tremendous loss. Oh my god. But in the end, we still get a good triumphant ending that we like. Where the character still gets to maintain some resonance of good. They still get to grow and learn from themselves and from others around them. Oh, the story is so good. It's so good. I really love King's ability to make a story with children as adolescent characters so young appear to be so older. I honestly felt while reading this that Charlie was like 21. I feel like me and Charlie could just have a glass of whiskey after work one day because girls been through a lot of shit. I was just surprised that this character was literally under the age of 10 this whole time. She felt like she was at least my age. <sighs> at the end of this story, I really got the closure that I needed. I was sad to see someone leave. I was happy to see someone prevail in their endeavors to stay alive, stay well, have their rights. Stephen King's books, in a way, are very political. It doesn't necessarily mention like the president at the time. The Institute did mention Trump. And that was interesting to place it in a frame of time. The fact that these books feel timeless, for example, the interpretation of technology. This book had to be written in like 1980. I have a really old copy of this book that I got from my friend, that guy that I told you about in my last video. This book had to be written way before the advancements in technology uh, uh, manifested the internet. Um, King's interpretation of how probability was calculated in the computers used by the shop. That was so epic. We do have government funded things that are happening in the world that we don't know about. I love the level of thought put into the story where we can think, what would the government do if they had the means and funds and resources to hone in on supernatural capabilities? And that is the harsh reality within this book that we actually probably would go these far lengths if it were capable for us to do so. I would definitely recommend you to read this book. I just found out there's a movie and the movie has Drew Barrymore in it. And to be honest, I've known there was a movie with Drew Barrymore as a little girl where she created fires, but I didn't know it was this book. And I'm really excited about this. So <laughs> that being said, I will be watching this movie tonight after finishing my whiskey drink. You guys, thank you for watching. Bye.